Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss how to prevent and treat nicks and cuts from shaving. If you're into wet shaving, chances are you deal with nicks and cuts on an ongoing basis. If you're new to it or if you have the wrong tools, you may get more nicks and cuts. If you're a seasoned pro, you may get them every once in a while but all of them will have them. A few years back, I met Kaivan at a conference and he was telling me about a new thing that he was working on and he couldn't quite reveal what it was. Just a few weeks ago, he sent me his product. It's called Glider and it's a styptic balm that helps to deal with nicks and cuts. I tested it and it's good stuff. But before we talk about how you deal and treat a cut, it's best to discuss how you actually prevent them in the first place. Now, before we talk about Glider, I wanna show you how you can prevent nicks and cuts because there's nothing better than not having them in the first place. Preventing nicks and cuts boils down to nine core items. The first one is that you should abstain from using cartridge razors and cartridge razor systems. That may be a surprise to you, but the Gillette Max 3s, Dollar Shave Club, and whatever they're called with their multiple blades are too dull and not sharp enough and you're more likely to get nicks and cuts in the long run. Not only is a cartridge system bad for your wallet, but it's also bad for your skin. They make the blades duller so you don't cut yourself as often, but the problem is once you have shaved for two or three times, the blades are so dull that you automatically get lots of nicks and cuts, which means you'll be forced to replace them which is great for the razor companies because they make continuous money off of you, but it's bad for your wallet and your skin. Instead, switch to a double-edged razor or a cartridge razor and you can learn more about those techniques in our guides on the website. Or if you wanna get that one-stop shop for the perfect shave, check out our shaving guide here. Two, do a proper pre-shave process. That means you have to clean your skin first, you wanna heat up your skin and open those pores, and you wanna use rich, creamy lather that protects your skin from the sharp light. If you have sensitive skin, it helps to add a pre-shave oil before you lather up because it's an additional layer of protection. Three, use a shaving brush to apply the lather. Using your hands works and you can spread the leather around, but using a brush actually helps to open up those hair follicles and it massages your skin and it makes sure that the leather is evenly distributed across your face. The brush really helps to coat your skin and lift the hairs entirely, which you can only do with a brush. To learn more about shaving brushes, please check out our guide here. Four, invest in quality shaving products. Skip the run-of-the-mill shave cream from a can because it has lots of air and it's not very lubricating. On the other hand, if you use a traditional shaving cream that has to be lathered up manually, you put the air in yourself and it has much more high quality fats and a higher amount of it, which ensures proper lubrication. Five, shave with a proper technique. That means you do short strokes and you wash in between and you re-lather areas before going over them again. To learn all about shaving technique and a proper way to do it, no matter if you use a straight razor or a double-edged razor or an electric shaver, check out our shaving guide here. Six, use a fresh, sharp razor blade every time you use a double-edged razor. Now, with a cartridge system that is super expensive, however, with a double-edged system, you can afford to do that. There are just a few cents a blade and so it's no problem to use a new one every time. Your skin will thank you for it. To learn more about double-edged shaving blades, please check out this guide here. Seven, experiment with different kinds of handles and blades because every face and every skin is unique and the way your beard grows. And sometimes the sharpest blade is maybe not the best solution for your face because your skin is too sensitive and the hair is too thin and something a little more dull is actually better. With blades, you can have different degrees of sharpnesses and with handles, you can have different angles as well as a rotation, which makes it more or less aggressive. Eight, give your face time to adjust. The first time you use a sharp blade on your face, no matter whether it's a double-edged shaver or a straight razor, you'll experience nicks and cuts. The more often you do it, the more your skin gets used to it, the better your technique gets and nicks and cuts will vanish. Nine, deal with underlying skin issues. If you suffer from acne or have other skin issues, you have to deal with those first so it doesn't interfere with your shave and with nicks and cuts. To learn more about that, please check out our guide on how to have clear skin here. 
So even if you follow all of those nine steps, you will still get cuts every once in a while, simply because you don't pay attention or there is maybe a zit that causes it. But when you have that and you get a cut, here is how you treat it. The old method was to use a styptic pencil. Some people used a piece of toilet paper. Others came up with a chapstick. But the problem with all of those solutions is that none is perfect. The toilet paper is not hygienic and may cause an infection. With a chapstick, you have that same issue. With a styptic pencil, they often break, they sometimes hurt, and it's always a pain to use them. It seems every few years, shaving companies come up with one new big thing. Even though it may not work better, it certainly makes them more money. But one area where they haven't innovated is dealing with nicks and cuts. So Glider is a styptic balm, and it's different from a styptic pencil in a sense that it's much softer. It's in this nice tube, you can undo it and just use it like a chapstick and just apply it to your nick. Its formulation contains argan oil, aloe vera, vitamin E, tea tree oil, and jojoba, which is great for your skin. It helps to sterilize that nick and that cut without using alcohol, which is bad for your skin and your face. It basically consists of soothing ingredients, which is great for your face and good for your nicks and cuts. It doesn't leave a chalky residue, and best of all, it doesn't contain any alcohol. The big problem of a classic styptic pencil is that it doesn't have a handle, so whenever you cut yourself, you have wet hands and it's all a mess and it breaks very easily, versus Glider comes in that chapstick-like tube where you can just twist so it's easy to handle when you have that nick and cut, everything is wet and you have shaving cream all over your face. It won't dissolve in your hands and it does the job every time. So how exactly should you use a styptic balm once you have a nick and cut? First of all, once you notice that you have a nick and cut, either because you see it bleeding or you feel it, stop shaving. Put your shaver down, clean it with water, and then immediately use the styptic balm and apply it to your face and the nick and cut. Rub it around a little bit on it, make sure, look at it in the mirror, and leave it on there, and wait until it stops bleeding. Once you've done that, you can lather up again and continue to finish your shave. Ideally, you apply glider on the nicks and cuts areas once you're done with your shave and before you go into your post-shave routine. So overall, styptic pencils cost a few bucks and you can get them in most drugstores. On the other hand, glider is a little more expensive and two of them come shipped to you for just $14.99. At the same time, if you break it down of cost per use, it's negligible and it works so much better than a styptic pencil. And overall, you have to buy a lot more styptic pencils because you drop them and they break or they just color off and they're not sterile anymore. So I would use this styptic pencil any day of the week. And so far, I've used really a minuscule amount of it, so I can foresee it will last me for probably years to come. The only downside of Glider right now is that it has a slightly grainy formulation. So I think they're already working on that and trying to come up with a better solution, but I will still keep using what I have because it works so well and I enjoy using it. The best way to deal with nicks and cuts is to prevent them in the first place by following the nine steps we outlined before. And if you inevitably have a nick or a cut, use a styptic balm to make sure you don't get infections and to deal with it professionally. In one of our recent Ask GG YouTube live sessions, people asked for me to show my outfit and explain what I'm wearing. So here we go. First of all, I'm wearing a vintage orange hand-blocked Mattersill print tie, and it's paired with a navy blue custom suit with a very fine wool fabric. It's a three-ply, and it almost feels like cashmere. I'm wearing a white club collar shirt with um, charcoal stripes, it's a double cuffed shirt and I'm wearing it with green malachite cufflinks from Fort Belvedere, which you can check out in the shop here. I'm wearing a matching pinky ring in malachite and silver and I use the color of green and orange in my pocket square to tie it all together, um, paired with some blue tones, so my whole outfit is coherent, consistent and looks well balanced. You can also find green in my shoes, which is kind of a olive green and it's not the exact same green, but you can find tones of it again in the pocket square. For socks, I opted for a light gray and light blue pair of shadow striped socks from Fort Belvedere, which you can find here. And even though they're contrasting, the shoe 
and the pants, they are kind of muted and the blue is again picked up in the pocket square. My jacket has peak lapels. It's a button configuration of 6'2". I have side bands and it's a very lightweight fabric with a beautiful lining that is herringbone and has a changeant effect and it's contrasting. Last but not least, I'm wearing a boutonniere from Fort Belvedere, which is light blue and works well with the socks and a pocket square. I chose a very small boutonniere because the pocket square is very high up and I want to keep my outfit from being overloaded. However, I have a large lapel, so a small flower looks very good on it. For a selection of boutonnieres, please take a look here. If you enjoyed this video, please sign up for a free email newsletter so videos like this come right to your inbox and stay tuned for our next one. Thank <laughs> you.